see. This is the uh, critical moment where you never know if it's actually live or not, but uh, is this thing on? Hello, hello, test check, test. I think it is. It says it's live, okay. So let me get over to this camera and uh, let me get over here too so I can actually see what you're seeing. And yeah, we have, uh, whoops, we have this, uh, this board here. This is the Turing Pi 2 cluster board and you might notice it's actually running right now. That's because I was doing a little testing. Um, but uh, these are some brand new RK1 single board computers. They have the RK3588 chip, which is even faster than the Pi 5, and I have four of them. And uh, so in, uh, in this live stream, I'm gonna try to set up, uh, let me make sure I can actually see, okay. I'm gonna try to set up four of these and see how fast this cluster goes. I don't know how far we'll get, but if you're watching this after February 22nd, I'll be sure to add chapter markers down below so you can skip around to the parts that you're interested. So uh, let's get started with this and hopefully you can hear me. If you can't, I'm, well, it, it looks like people can hear me, so that's good. Um, they did not send me a Turing Pi 2 to test with, uh, uh, Jonathan. Um, this is actually my Turing Pi 2 2.4 revision and I upgraded it to the firmware 2.0 a few months ago when I got some early test test boards to test with. I also bought uh, four of these eight gigabyte modules, uh, but they sent me these 32 gig. That's why I put somewhere in the top corner the paid promotion or whatever. They didn't pay me anything, but they did send me these to test. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, let me switch back on my camera. Something possible with RISC-V. Not, uh, RISC-V is not gonna be fast enough to do much useful clustering, but you could do it with a Mars CM or something like that. I haven't tested that, uh, but let's switch over to the camera over here. I'm gonna unplug everything. I was just doing some testing uh, because I know that there's some, some pre-setup work that you need to do, but I'll, I'll reset everything here and I'll show you how this all goes together. And uh, the camera's autofocus is a little, wonky sometimes, so I'm sorry if you have to have a beautiful view of the hair on the back of my hand or something. But uh, this is the Turing Pi 2 board, and there's no video. I think there's definitely video. Uh, this is the Turing Pi 2 board. Uh, this was announced, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago? Actually, this is the, this is the first version that I got, and this is the version that was from the, the videos I did a couple years ago on the Compute Modeler 4 clustering, and they sell these little adapters. Yeah, there we go. They sell these little adapters from, this is the Jetson Nano form factor, and these adapters let you take a Compute Module 4, like this, you plug it in like that, and then you can put four Compute Module 4s on one Turing Pi 2 board. So kind of a fun thing. Uh, each one of these slots has an ethernet connection. It has, uh, the first slot has a connection to, let's see if you can actually see this. I'm not even looking at the preview. Uh, it has a connection to the HDMI port and the USB port. Uh, and then other features on the board are distributed to other slots. So like one slot has this little two channel SATA connection here. Another slot has a USB three controller with an internal header here and these ports. There's two ethernet uh, NICs that go in through the switch chip to all the pies. But as far as I can tell so far, you can't do any lag or anything. So you're limited to one gigabit per second in and out of the board. So one, one thing that I notice a lot of people say is like, oh, you know, this board is, is actually, like a cluster is good for redundancy, but this board is not, not as good for that because you have one single point of failure. And that's true. Uh, if you're going to deploy something like this for production, you might want to have two of these boards. Uh, but it is nice to have multiple nodes on a board like this, especially when they're faster than the Compute Module 4. Um, but yeah, so that was the cluster that I set up last year, or two years ago. I don't re remember anymore. Uh, but let me put this back away. <clears throat> it is a curious board. Let's see. Oh, sorry about that. I'm clipping here. This is the first live stream I've done at the new office, and uh, let me, uh, here, I'll show you my setup. I, uh, I'm, I'm pulling out all the stops and trying everything today. So let's see if this actually works, if I go to the iPhone source. 
So I have the camera over here with the little intro that I read. That's an Elgato prompter. I have my lights at the desk. There's OBS. Hello. Uh, there's you guys chatting in the stream. Here's uh, a camera for what I'm working on. Uh, there's my other camera, it's another Sony that comes uh, this way and gives you a view of, of me back here. And yeah, I have it all, all set up. And the, the, this iPhone, which you can't see, let me switch back to this camera. The iPhone is running NDI, so it's all wireless and uh, sending its signal into OBS. So some cool stuff. Part of the reason I'm doing this live stream is just to make sure that I can do live streams in here. Uh, that was one goal with the studio to make it easier. Eventually, I want to do live streams at the main shooting desk, which let me get the iPhone back out. Uh, I want to do some live streams over there, uh, but I don't have a setup yet for that. That's just for recording right now. Uh, but I do have, I'll show you, I do have a lot of the groundwork for it. If I go to Home Assistant, uh, I can just go to screen here so you can see that. Uh, if I go to Home Assistant, I can turn on the, uh, the studio lights over here. I'll do that and then come back into the iPhone and there's the studio lighting. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm still automating over time, uh, but we'll get there. Anyway, let's come back to this camera and we're gonna get this thing set up. So I'm just using it uh, bare on the desktop right now. That's probably not advisable. You should probably put some sort of protection, whether it's just some things on these these holes. This is a, a mini ITX board, by the way. So you could put this inside of any mini ITX case. Speaking of, this is a case from my electronics. This case here, which you've probably never seen before because it's new-ish. Well, they might be selling it already, I don't know. But this is two mini ITX cases that are strapped together in one 2U rack mount. So I'm gonna actually put this board into here once I have it set up along with a pie cluster uh, for more comparisons. So that's a fun thing. Uh, but let's get setting this up. Uh, somebody pre-stream mentioned, what is this weird, weird thing I have here? This is called a Pico PSU. And uh, if I remember, I'll put a link to it down in the description, but it's a Pico PSU. It's literally an ATX PSU. This one, I don't remember. I think it's 250 watts max. I don't know if the 12 volt power supply I'm using can supply that much, but this one can do up to 250 watts. It comes with a few cables for internal PC stuff, but these are great for this kind of board because you don't need a full ATX power supply for this. You could do that, but it, it makes it a little harder. And it's nice because uh, not only is it compact, this will stay on even at low power. So if you're only using a few watts, this won't turn off like some ATX power supplies will. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna plug this in for power to a standard 24 pin ATX header. This board has uh, front panel connections over here where if you put a normal power switch on it, you can power on and off the board through that. Uh, there's some other setting uh, headers on here that I cover in my video that I did last year. Uh, I also noticed today, um, this they had a hardware bug. This is, you know, these boards were designed, this is like the, the second generation board. There's always gonna be little hardware bugs, but there's a, there's a battery adapter from CR2032 down to 1220 uh, because they had to fix a bug in the RTC clock battery. So that's always fun. Thank you, Keith, for that, uh, that wonderful little donation. And yes, I, would, I love uh, helping inspire people to do other projects too. But since I have the batteries out and since I can remember now and I'll forget later, I'll just stick that in there. Come on. Get in there. There we go. Okay, so now the RTC has a battery. I don't remember if the firmware supports it yet or not. Uh, there's, there's some things that are still being worked on in this board's firmware. Um, and also, I think the newer vi revision of this board, this is a 2.4. The 2.5 has a new microcontroller, I think, and maybe some other new stuff too, um, little changes and things to make things better. Because what invariably happens is you send hardware out into the world, people start using it, and they find all these little problems. Uh, but also, if you use a Turing Pi uh, RK1, this supports these M.2 slots on the bottom. The Compute Module 4 doesn't because its single PCI lane gets broken out into all these different things. Oh, uh, that was very delayed, but uh, there's the super chat showing up in the actual stream. Um, so I'm going to put these team group SSDs. These are all one terabyte 
Yeah, it is a 1222 battery. It's tiny. Um, I, I don't remember. I think that this board was fine with that. Uh, somebody mentioned there's an extra resistor somewhere in here. We have to desolder one. One of these little resistors. I, I either did that on this board or this board was fine and it was my initial board that I had to do that. I don't remember. Uh, in any case, this board should at least boot up. I, I tested that already. So I'm going to put these in. I have my M.2 screw bag and uh, I don't have a mat down, so these are going to go flying everywhere. I'll probably be finding them for the next few years. Oh, they all stayed. Okay, good. And we'll try to find some screws that fit. Uh, I don't know what size these, these are threaded for. It's obviously not that one. Oh, it is that one. Never mind. Okay. Let's get these in. I just want to see if they work. <coughs> they should. I have no reason to believe they won't, but uh, trust but verify, they say. Oh, shoot. Especially with Kickstarter projects. Kickstarter, GoFundMe, all those things. Um, you can never expect, uh, whenever I back something on Kickstarter, which I did back these on Kickstarter, I basically think, you know what, it'd be great if it ever happens, but I don't expect it to. So if you come in with the right expectation, you won't be disappointed. <clears throat> I also have a video up from last year on a Ceph cluster using six Raspberry Pis with the Desk Pi Super 6C. That one has six NVMe SSDs on the bottom, and it's really fun for practicing stuff clustering. So check that out too. I don't have any links to any of these things, but uh, I'll try to remember afterwards to put them in the description. You can also tell that this board was a earlier revision because there is evidence of hand rework on it. There's a lot of little bits of stuff. Oh, somebody, Ford donated $2. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, let's see, there's also messages. Ooh, clusters and cereal, yes, I do, I do enjoy cereal. In high school I could eat quite a bit. Um, all right, uh, the other thing that's important for these, so this uses the RK3588 system on a chip. Oh wow, it actually focused, that's good. Um, this chip is faster than what's in the Raspberry Pi 5, which is nice, uh, and it has a six tops NPU built in. So I, ha I know that there's a, there's a setup for Frigate now that uses that. It requires some custom setup work, but uh, the advantage of a chip like this is it's pretty darn fast for a SOC. The disadvantage is it's pretty darn expensive. This particular module, the 32 gig version, was $299. And uh, that's pretty expensive for an SBC. That's like beyond beyond Jetson pricing, but there are 32 gigs of RAM. There's two 16 gig modules here, and there's, I think, 32 gigs of EMMC and a gigabit. I think that's gigabit. It might be 2 point, that one, 2.5 gigabit. Is it RTL 8211F? I think that's one gigabit, uh, but you can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Uh, but anyway, this, this board is 299. They make one, I think it's 129, 100 and, I don't know, where's one of my, this is one of my 8 gig boards. Oh, there goes one of my M.2 screws just went flying. Oh, well, uh, this is the 8 gig board. I think it's like 129 or something. They're not cheap, that's for sure. This uh, Raspberry Pi, this is the 1 gig light. Uh, so no Wi-Fi, no UMMC. This one starts, it's used to start at 25 bucks. And I think it starts at 35 now, I think. I could be wrong again. But anyway, 300 bucks, 35 bucks. Big difference. This is like three, four, whoop, oh goodness, hopefully that still works. Three or four times more expensive, or three or four times faster, but it's like four or five times more expensive. So you get what you pay for, and uh, if you're an early adopter for these things, you end up paying a little more too sometimes. So yeah, and somebody was asking about thermals. There is, there is a solution for that on here, because this chip does get hot. It gets a little bit hotter than the Raspberry Pi 5 chip and much hotter than the Pi 4. So I also bought these heat sinks with fans. And we'll see if we can get one of these out. Whoa, whoa. So here's a th two thermal pads and some screws. Oh boy, this will be this will be fun. Just what you came to see. 
I'm trying to get these little stickers off the thermal pads. Ugh. Could spend most of the stream just doing that, probably. Uh, I don't know which chip. I'm guessing it's the rock chip, this little controller chip. RK8061. I think that's the PMIC, the power management chip. And yes, they can get kind of hot. So I'm going to try it on that one because that's what this looks like. And uh, I did touch a grounded portion of my desk a minute ago, so uh, I'm going to call that good enough to prevent any static discharge on these things. And uh, someone's mentioning N100 boxes for 130 bucks. Now, that was quite a deal that I got on the N100 uh, GMK Tech Mini PC. Generally, they go for 160 to 200 bucks. So keep that in mind. The deal that I had is kind of rare and it keeps going out of stock. Uh, it was enough that GMK Tech actually emailed me and asked me to change my listing for a while uh, because they had none available. Oops. It seems like that's the right height on the uh, thermal pad because it's stuck on there perfectly right away. Ooh. Okay. I'll try to get these lined up. And uh, we're just going to tear that because... Oh, they gave me five screws. Oh boy. How many of these will we lose during the live stream? I'm guessing at least one. But they included five, so that's okay. And each one of these heat sinks has a fan built in. And that fan is PD bone controlled. So just like the Raspberry Pi 5 has these little mini JST connectors. This has this has like the next size up. I think it's you know what they could be the same. Let I'll check that in just a minute. I have a Raspberry Pi 5 over here. That'd be interesting if uh, if they are because then you could repurpose these little heat sinks uh, for the Pi 5. I haven't seen many with fan connectors that small. I think the Pi 5s is smaller. Let's see here. Yep. Pi 5, Pi 5 is like 2 millimeter, or it's, it's tiny. This JSD connector is so small. Um, if you look it up online, like the battery connector for RTC on the Pi 5, all these connectors, the standard size is the, the size that uh, they're using here. Uh, th these are all like just a tiny bit smaller. Okay, so we have, we have this guy set up. Uh, this one, I actually, I cheated and pre-flashed it with Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Ubuntu. I always say Ubuntu, but uh, people keep always uh, making fun of me for how I pronounce Ubuntu. And uh, I actually asked one of the Ubuntu employees at CES how to pronounce it, and he said it's Ubuntu. So I'm going to try to try to update that. But anyway, I actually pre-flashed this one because it takes 90 minutes, 80 minutes, something like that, to flash one of these. Uh, and I couldn't get USB working, so it, it flashes over Ethernet through the BMC to one of the slots very slow. I'm going to put this into slot one, which is this node here. And we'll get this in here. And I don't think we'll have time today to test every single feature of these things, uh, but we'll test as much as we can. That's interesting. I wonder, did I do this upside down? I think I might have done this upside down because I think the band connector is supposed to come out the other end. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if there is a right side up or upside down, but let's do another one. I'm going to put this one aside. BMC SSH is faster. You know what? I have not tried that, so maybe I'll have to try that at some point. Uh, the BMC lets you, you can log in over a web UI. You can log in over SSH. It's actually a nice uh, BMC, especially compared to the Turing Pi 1, which you could do almost nothing. Uh, so I do like that. Uh, let's get out another heat sink. Yes, it is running BMC version 2.0.0. I don't know if there's a newer version of that as well. Uh, the heat sinks came with an instruction. This doesn't have an instruction on it. I could check. So one nice thing is... Uh, they do have a lot of documentation here. 
Mounting heatsink. Let's see what it says. That's what it looks like. So we're good so far. And, uh, okay, I chose correctly. <laughs> They're using this little tweezer. That'd be nice, but uh, I don't have my tweezers on hand, but maybe I'll grab them if I need to. The wire is on the left. Okay, so I think I did that the opposite way. If I'm looking like this, the wire should be on the other side. Okay, well, we'll switch that out. Okay. <laughs> Hi, YouTube. Yeah, your chat was in the uh, burned in there. Thank you for being, thank you for everyone for behaving during that time period. An Apple Chromecast? What's an Apple Chromecast? Uh, get out of there. Already making my mistakes. But luckily no screws have fallen yet. Is the sound level okay? Because that's another thing I did not get to check. Um, is my health good? No scary hospital videos. Knock on wood. Well, that's laminate, but uh, underneath is particle board, so that's good enough. Oh, here's some wood, some, some bamboo. Um, I have not had any major health issue uh, in the past year or so, so... That has been awesome. Thanks for asking. Now, it's kind of stuck on there. The problem is now this is off. I'm going to have to gently peel you away. All right, let's try this again. So it wants the power cable coming at the left. Read the instructions. RTFM. Okay. Now we'll try it this way, and it should that should line up with the uh, the cable being correct. Thirty hertz high pass filter. Is it the sibilance that's getting you, or is there some sound that you're hearing? Because luckily there's no trains rolling by right now. RK1 support in mainline. Uh, maybe I know that they were working on that or at least the RK3588 in mainline with a more standardized install. But right now the, uh, the, the Ubuntu install that you get uh, has kernel 5.10. Okay, this is correct. So now, if I go in here, see the, the fan cable comes out and uh, we got that nice tiny cable. And I could go get my tweezers, but instead I'll just Try using fingernails. There we go. Okay, we got one. Three to go. Uh, that's already out. And heatsink. The desk base. Ah. I, I would do that right now. But the problem is that OBS can be finicky with audio when you change it on the fly, so I don't want to screw that up. Um, you hear nothing else. Hopefully you can hear like things outside your house or something. I don't want to be tuned directly into your brain. Yeah, a full video, maybe, maybe not. Um, what I might do for a full video is compare this cluster to the DeskPy Super 6C running Compute Module 4s uh, for performance differences and things. What I'd really like to happen is Raspberry Pi to come out with a Compute Module 5, which they said is going to happen. And then I could compare that to these. But so far, I have not heard a word. And uh, besides, it will happen first half 2024. So we'll see. What am I going to use this cluster for? Mostly for testing. Uh, if you look around in my studio, there's a lot of stuff that I use for testing. Uh, I have, in the past, I've swapped over my like, home lab services to clusters like these. But the problem is, I, when, I'm, when I'm trying to compare the clusters, compare the things against each other, I don't have enough money to buy like two sets of clusters for testing and all that. So I end up like taking down the main one and using it for the testing. So this will be a test cluster, probably in the main rack. I don't know if I'll put it in the main rack or my secondary rack. Uh, we'll see. Okay, I'm going to do it the right way. Put it on the left and then put this on. And... Line up the holes. Get these out. Yeah. Get out of there. The 
trash pile is starting to grow. But you can't see that because it's off the camera. Thank you very much, BP Brainiac. That'll probably pop up on the live stream soon, but uh, I can see it in the live chat too. What OS am I using? I am using Ubuntu because that is the only supported OS on these so far. Uh, I, I forget the name of the guy who's maintaining these things, uh, but there's a maintainer of a custom distribution for a lot of different rock chip boards, and uh, they're kind of working with him, I think, on it. Um, but anyway, so I will be using that, and I am still maintaining my Pi Cluster playbook, uh, at least minimally. I don't have enough time to maintain it all the time, but uh, right now it should install at least on Raspberry Pis. I haven't tested it on the on this board because I haven't put the whole cluster together yet. Uh, let's see if I can get a second one of these in. Just freehanding it. Oh boy. Yeah, you should definitely use tweezers for this, but you know. Why use tweezers when you can use your fingernail and then bend it backwards? All right, number three. My name Jeff. Okay, another heatsink. And someone mentioned I'm not using the LTT screwdriver. I do, I do use it for a lot of things. It's a, it's a good screwdriver, but uh, the problem is that when you want to do a little detail work, it does come with a decent. Uh, small Phillips, but then you got this giant screwdriver. It's just a lot of mass to move around. So small electronics use precision screwdrivers. This is a Klein. Oh, I didn't know that came off. But anyway, this is a Klein. It has a small flat, small Phillips, large flat, large Phillips, large-ish. I mean, small compared to that. Uh, but it's, it's a good one. There's tons of these. I think LTT is coming out with one. They have not contacted me about getting one to test, so... I'll just wait until they're available and pick one up and test it out, see if it's any better than any of these. I don't really like ratcheting for small electronics. I, I like having very precise control. I don't know if theirs will be ratcheting, though. Lots of thumbs up. I fix it kits, yeah. Uh, also, in this new studio, I've been testing out a few different tools. Um, and uh, yeah, once I get the uh, electronics workbench set up, I'm going to be exploring that topic a bit more again. Yeah, we got some screws. Get out, get out, get out, get out. You're welcome, James Ortega. And uh, thank you for the good health wishes. Oh, I did the wrong side first on that one. There's always a side that's like, flimsy and a side that's stiffer. I do the flimsy side first and you peel these things off. I'm getting my finger oils all over it. Uh, there's that one. I like how these are cut, the uh, the little paper on this. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. Uh, let me go to OBS here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but the uh, the plastic is cut over size, so it's actually a lot easier to peel this off. I wish that they would do that for these, but I know it's hard to do that because you have to cut the cut the, the thermal pad first and then put the plastic on or do other creative ways of putting that together. Okay, left side. Yeah, left side and put it on. All right. By the time you do four of these, you start having a system down and then you can do them quickly, but then you're done with it, so... Uh, there's that one from James. Oh, and thanks, Jupe, Jupe Turd, Tur, Turwigden. That's, I'm sorry, but I am the worst, probably one of the top five worst people in the world for pronouncing anything that's not like Jeff or Joe. But yeah, you're welcome. 62 and playing around with this stuff. I hope when I am in my 60s, I still have the energy and health and... Uh, time, and especially to share with grandkids, hopefully, if I ever have any. Right now, the kids, but uh, only one of them has shown much interest in computing stuff yet, but that's okay. That's why I'm setting up a retro corner in the office, which uh, maybe we'll show you at some point on this live stream. 
and Reinaldo Faria. Sorry again about the pronunciation, but uh, there's three of four, and there's Jupes. Okay. Ooh, this one's going to be tricky. I'm going to move this out of the way. There's a heat sink for the, the switch chip. And it's right where I would normally stick my fingernail. Get this in. Ow. Okay, well, I'm still not going to do it the right way. By golly. There. Okay, three on the last one, finally. You know, I've never used Linux Mint. I've used many distributions, but I've never used Linux Mint. So maybe I should sometime. I kind of live vicariously through explaining computers. He uses Mint a lot, so I figured that I pick up enough on it from his videos that I don't have to do my own. Okay, last one. Self-host a Minecraft server. So my idea is, uh, while I'm putting this one together, that uh, they could, in the retro corner, so far I have not plugged Ethernet or any kind of networking into either of the Mac, the PowerBook 3400, and the uh, G4 mirrored drive door that I'm setting up up there. I'll have a video coming out on those soon, don't worry, because uh, I've done a lot of fun stuff, talked to a lot of fun YouTubers. Uh, there will be uh, four different ones appearing in that video. Uh, but I'm setting up an area. My goal is to have zero internet, but maximum fun, basically how it was when, when I was a kid. Uh, tons of games and apps and things. Everything works offline, and almost nothing even requires an internet connection to set it up. So that's my goal up there, and I think giving the kids the freedom to play like that, and especially when they're younger, not have the internet access, and this is not coming off. <laughs> okay. Uh, not have that uh, the overhead of social media and all that. I'm hoping that that'll be a fun thing for the kids and uh, a safe on-ramp into the computing world because I know I was fascinated by graphics stuff, by games, by um, what I could do with Photoshop and an old scanner that my dad brought home. A lot of fun stuff. Okay, do this the right way. Left side and flip that. And I almost have enough screws from the spares now that I could do this. This one I'm not going to tear. I'm going to open the bag and get out one more screw. And we'll save the rest of these in one of these heat sink containers. These are fun little containers. I'll save them and figure something out, to, something to do with them. We're almost to the boot time. CM3.4, no it is not, it is not a CM3 or a CM4, it is the Turing Pi RK1 system on a module, and it's in the uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano form factor, I think that's the one, uh, but it's in a, in a kind of memory dim kind of form factor, and I'm putting these heat sinks on right now, and once I get them on, we'll get this board booted up and see what happens. Hopefully no magic smoke. Did I ever use BSD? I do use BSD for uh, OpenSense. I have OpenSense routers at home and at work here. And uh, it's good for that. And I use Mac OS, which is, of course, based on BSD. Uh, but mostly Linux. That's what I'm most familiar with. OK, that's in this fan on. Now, I think when I, when I boot this up, these fans are going to be kind of loud. I don't know if you'll be able to hear them. Uh, because by default, they just go 100%. You have to install the, the system firmware to uh, to get the fans to spin with PWM. So what I might end up doing is unplugging the fans if they're too loud. Uh, all right, so we got that in. I'm going to clean these up before I make my M.2 screws go flying all over the place. And yes, it would be good to have a little mat on the desk. I'm just lazy. I haven't brought my mat from home. Right now there's a drill press and some lights sitting on top of that mat, and I'm just too lazy to go get it. <clears throat> and uh, 
You might also notice I have this little USB UART cable here. We might or might not need that. I did when I did the firmware upgrade, uh, but yeah, I should be able to get into this through SSH or through the web UI. Uh, but that's in. I'm going to grab, let's see, there's my network cable. And we'll plug it into, I, th I think both of the ports are set up as just, you know, bridged, bridged ports that uh, go, go to the whole switch. But there might be some software setup you can do that changes that. Sorry about not doing anything on camera right now. I'm just throwing away all the stuff that I need to throw away. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Gamers Nexus, I have one of those at home. I just haven't brought it. Um, <clears throat> The fans are very quiet once you get the software installed. I do have a PO box if you go to Midwestern Mac LLC, uh, MidwesternMac.com. Uh, yeah, no screws under the board. That is a good thing to check. No. Okay. <clears throat> Power before Ethernet. I, I plug in Ethernet first usually. Yes, I got the Diet Dr Pepper. That is uh, keeping me caffeinated today. I also have, uh, some water, and, uh, yeah, let's see. Thank you, Lewis, for mentioning me in Blue Sky. And yes, I am on Blue Sky and Threads and Twitter, X, whatever it is now, and, uh, what is the other one? Oh, Mastodon. So, find me on all those, wherever you are. I think in five or ten years, one of those will probably win out for, at least for tech. But right now, people I know are all over those. Uh, but let's go back to this guy, and you'll see if it explodes. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, I got the battery in, got the four modules in. Don't need to plug anything else in. And uh, somebody asked about the power supply. So this is a Pico PSU. Uh, this one can support up to 250 watts, but I'm using a 12-volt, 8-amp barrel plug power supply, which, because of the, the length of the distance to my power cord under the desk. I can't show you it right now, otherwise I have to reroute the cable. Uh, but it's a 12 volt, uh, 8 amp power supply. I got it on Amazon for like 20, 25 bucks, something like that. And it's useful for anything, not just this, but uh, this should power the board just fine with four nodes, even at full tilt. So, should I plug it in? Yeah, <laughs> covering my ears. Okay, we'll see. Okay, nothing bad so far. Uh, this LED is for the BMC's network connection. And then I saw there's also a power LED up there just showing the board has power. There's my hand. The, the camera loves focusing on my hand. I hate that. Like anytime my hand comes in, it's like, oh, a hand. I love hands. It's like Quentin Tarantino with feet except for hands. Anyway, that's uh, some Sony engineer somewhere must be fascinated with hands. Uh, but no boom and... The BMC is booting up. I also see lights on the network connection. Let me move this little Velcro out of the way. Oh, and I hear fans. So all four, all four boards booted at the same time. And remember, I, I told you I cheated on the first one. I actually have this one flashed with Ubuntu. I think it's Ubuntu 2004 or 2204 or something like that. And can you hear the fans? Let me know in the chat. Let me get the, uh, I'll get the iPhone to give you another perspective on this. Uh, and we'll see if it actually does audio too. The iPhone. And uh, turn on sound from here. Ooh, Ooh I might sound, sound, sound terrible. terrible. I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. There's those little fans. Oh, there's, oh, there's some dust, dust on the table. Let's, let's get, get that off there. Can you, Can you hear that? that? I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute, mute the iPhone. iPhone. Oh, when I talk, you can hear it. Yeah, I, I do have... Uh, oh, gosh, I forgot I'm still on there. Um, I do have the uh, compressor and limiter set in OBS, So, it, and I think I have noise gate or something. Anyway, the audio gate does cancel the fan. Okay. Yeah, sorry about the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll keep that off. I'll keep the audio off on that no matter what. Uh, Camera aperture is actually at f8 right now. Unfortunately, this is a full-frame camera, so you know. Anyway, let's uh, let's go to my screen. There it is, and uh, there's YouTube. Let's see how many people are watching. I don't. 
I don't know how to even check that on here. Analytics, nothing. The stream is healthy. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how this all works, but uh, I, th I thought it would say something concurrent viewers maybe. Oh, 1649. Oh, nice. Thanks for watching. No new members. Oh, that's terrible. I don't chill for members, but, uh, but if you want to become a member, there's, you get to see a, a post for members, and that's about it. Uh, let's go over here. So we did the heat sink. And uh, no, thank you, everybody, for saying there's 1649. OK, I'm going to cover that up just in case. <laughs> we'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, but one of the things that I like to do with any new SBC that I get is I have basically my whole life is in Git somewhere or another. Most of it's on GitHub publicly. Uh, but I have this repo called SBC Reviews. And I started doing this a couple years ago. 2022, I think, is when I started around this time. And uh, now anytime I get a new one in, I run through kind of a gauntlet of tests to see how it works, see how fast it is, all that kind of stuff, and see if it works. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always fun finding like, oh, this, this thing doesn't actually work. Uh, it says it should, but it doesn't. Um, so, and then I document it all here. And then after this, I'll make a video if the board warrants making a video about it. Uh, but a lot of people are like, oh, did you ever test this? Or are you ever going to do a video on it? It's like, yeah, I'm not going to do a video on it. But I did do a lot of testing on like the Core 3566 and the, um, what's another one like that? The Orange Pi 5. I've done a lot of testing, but it's like, I, I did a video on the Rock 5 Model B, which is similar. Uh, but they're not different enough that I decided to do another video on it. So anyway, that's my philosophy on that. Uh, but we did the mounting heatsink, flashing OS. So what I'm going to try to do... Uh, I believe if you just plug it into your network and you have uh, MDNS working, you should be able to go to turing.local, and that should take you to the BMC. I don't know if there's password protection. Uh, I say that that should work. Let's check on my network. If I go in here. Oh, turingpy.local. That's what it might be. There it is. And I think it does have uh, basic authentication, and it might be like Turing, Turing, or something like that. Uh, uh, there's something about BMC up here. There's documentation. It's helpful. Um, connect to the BMC. Here we go. So serial console is how I did it the first time, root and Turing. SSH. So I'm going to see if that works. Let's, let's test it really quick. Make this bigger so you can actually see it. Well, some people will be able to see it. It's still kind of small on phone screens. I'm going to say SSH, uh, what would be root at turingpy.local. And the password's turing. Oh, we're in. And it's doing stuff. So it's, it's basically running its own little thing. That's nice. Um, I might be able to flash through there. We'll see. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do right now, uh, let me, let me switch back over to this guy. Uh, so this, this BMC gives you a web UI that lets you do all these different things. You can, I don't know what the USB, I think USB is to like connect the USB port to different, to different, uh, slots so that you can flash them and do things like that. Um, power turns on and off. Turing Pi. So if I turn off all but one, I think you can see the screen down here. Let me know if you can't. Uh, but that turned off all of those. This one's still going full blast on the uh, fan. It shouldn't be if it's uh, booted into Ubuntu. Let's see. It's, uh, yeah, it's booted up. So I don't know why that one is not, not doing it. Oh, I got a, I got a chat thing. Let's see. It's a Unix system, Zen Admin. Ah, oh, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, keep spreading the word. I'm, I'm going to go back to uh, my college in uh, a week or two and, and talk to them about some Raspberry Pi stuff, open source stuff. So a lot of fun stuff. But yes, we are in. Uh, and uh, where's, let me get back to, yeah. You know what? I'm going to stick this live streaming thing over on my other monitor. That way I can still check on chat. Oh, wow, holy cow. Ugh. Go away. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to go back over here. 
So node one is running, and it's weird though, the fan, I, th I thought the fan would, would slow down, but maybe there's something else I need to install for that. But I'm gonna turn on the other ones. We'll get them going. And uh, you should be able to see, I think you can see, let me check. Yeah, you should be able to see that the little red lights lit up again. Let me zoom in on the board here, since there's nothing else down there that you need to see right now. Whoa. It's hard to do this through the computer. I should just do it through the camera, but there we go. Thumbs up. Yeah, it's really good at focusing on hands, the Sony. Uh, it's a little low. It's, oh, now it's a little high. Okay. Uh, and then I don't know what type of connected nodes. I don't know what this node info is for. SD card, I guess, is just information about, I think, the flash on here, maybe? Maybe there's, I might have an SD card on the bottom. This is risky. No, I don't have one in there. There is a micro SD card slot, which I don't know if you can see it. Oh, this is really risky. Oh boy. Um, I can't see what I'm doing right now. Oh, you can't see it either. Uh, there we go. See right, right there. There's a micro SD card slot. I think that's, you can use that for flashing the BMC and things like that. Uh, but I don't know what, Oh, sorry about that. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's get back here. I am not a live streamer by any means at all. But I think that uh, this is for that, but I, I don't know why it would show this. Anyway, this is showing that it's on uh, version 2.0.0. You can upgrade the firmware through this web UI, which is scary. I hate upgrading firmware on any kind of board. Um, it might have EMMC somewhere on it. I, uh, I can't pronounce your name or your username. Pulalaka, hello, EMMC. Uh, but this is the flashing the node thing. So I'm I'm going to do that while we're talking. I'm going to go ahead and upload this. And this is a fun thing too. So if you look at the, you can't see it because this is in 1080p. Uh, but it'll like be like oh I'm almost done. But if you look at the percentage here, which you can't see because it's so tiny. It's like 0.4%, 0.5%. So it's actually, this is the percentage of actually showing what it's doing. But this bar is like, wee! So just a little, a fun little bug in the, uh, in the UI here. But I think I have to leave that UI open if I want to uh, keep flashing it. So I'm going to leave that up. Come back over here and uh, we'll start testing one of these boards since one of them is up. Uh, so let me get logged in here. And... Let's get a few of these basic bits of information. Uh, so NeoFetch, Apt, update. I'm going to update the software. Well, I'm just going to update the, uh, the apt cache. And then I'm going to install NeoFetch and check what it sees on the board. Because this is the first time I booted up one of these 32 gig modules. I think they're the same as the 16 gig that I tested before. Um, And let me know in the comments if you can't see can't see something that that uh, that I'm doing. Progress bars are usually for show. You know what, what was funny is I realized like I, setting up that old Mac, the Power Mac G4 uh, progress bars. I noticed that most people don't use them at all anymore because they're just so nonsensical. They don't mean anything. Oh, what, there was something. What was that? I keep hearing that sound. Uh, BP Brainiac. Oh, thank you. Yes, upgrade because YOLO. Did I just, what did I just do? I'm just installing NeoFetch. Holy cow, why is it installing so much stuff? It's a lot of dependencies. Maybe I shouldn't use NeoFetch anymore. I didn't realize it installed so much. All right, NeoFetch. Oh, clear NeoFetch. Okay, so we got uh, Ubuntu 2204, so that's nice, but it's kernel 510, uh, the Rockchip fork of it. I, I don't know why Rockchip, like Rockchip could do so much better if they would just work with Linux more. They don't as much. I mean, it's nice that they're at least on 510. It's not the oldest kernel in the world, but it could be on 6, 6.2, 6.3, whatever, you know. Oh, well, anyway. Uh, and we got eight cores. So this is sort of a lie. Uh, if we look at the RK3588, uh, if we look at the specs here, it's 
uh, four A76 cores and four A55 cores. I believe that they run at different frequencies. I don't know what the 1.8 gigahertz is. Um, and also the different boards can run them at different frequencies as well. These might be at, at 1.8 gigahertz, I don't know. Uh, but we have 32 gigs of memory and uh, we'll do a few tests here. So first I'm gonna grab this output and paste it in here because I like to do that to have reference. And we'll get uname. This is the information for the, I, I always do my tests with the default install from the company that makes the thing. A lot of people are like, why don't you do this setting? Why don't you do that setting? It's because like, this is the experience people get when they buy the thing. So, you know, all right. And then I'm gonna do a quick Geekbench 6 run just for the kicks. Geekbench. Uh, and I don't know if they have a download for ARM yet. I think you still have to do preview downloads. You go for Linux. Uh, oh, it just downloaded for Intel or AMD. Uh, Geekbench 6 ARM. I wish they'd just make it, oh, that's Geekbench, nope. I'm just downloading the same thing over and over and over again. If I go here. Uh, it doesn't have the link to like their the preview thing. Geekbench 6 preview. Here. There we go. Preview versions. ARCH64. Okay. Uh, wget. I'll download this. And will I remember on the live stream the right arguments for tar? XVF. Yeah, good. Okay. Six. Okay. So we'll let that run for a minute. And while it's doing that, sorry if I keep kicking the camera. The tripod is literally right where my foot goes. Poor planning on my part. Uh, while that's running, I did not plug in, I'm silly, I didn't plug in my power monitor. And I don't think there's a way, let's see if there's a way to get power. Uh, BMC, there's, I don't think there's a way to get like power. Mm -hmm. so there's, you can turn on and off nodes. Do that. You can't do, you can't get power info to each slot. So that'd be a cool feature for one of these things. But I can't, I can't see exactly how much power is being used by each one. So I can't really get the like performance per watt out of this that easily. Uh, but that's running. Let me go back and check on here. A subscription service. I think that was a user benchmark. Geekbench, I actually pay for Geekbench Premium or Pro or whatever it is. The funny thing is you can't use Geekbench Premium or whatever that is with the preview release. I have an issue open for that because it's like I'm paying for it. I would like to be able to connect my account to my Geekbench installs, but I can't. Uh, not for ARM or Risk v Uh Yeah, XKCD comic strip on it. That's, that's how I remember a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, power top. I don't know if I don't, well, it's running the benchmark, so I don't want to screw it up right now. Um, but yeah, I, I could check and see if there's any power metrics available there, but that might also just be on the RK1. It might not be on the thing. Um, the RAM on the CPU boards. Yeah, so uh, let's go back to here and up on here. So while it's doing that, I'll give you a quick overview of this board especially for anybody not familiar with a system on module. So you might be used to something like the Raspberry Pi, which has uh, GPIO and input output. Oh gosh, sorry about that. Uh, so it has GPIO input and output like USB ports and all that. It has HDMI ports, all that's built in. This is a, um, there's an SOC system on a chip on here. And this is a single board computer, an SBC. These are called system on modules or SOMs or SOMs. And it has a system on a chip, but you'll notice there's no way to plug anything into it. There's no HDMI, USB, anything like that. That's all exposed through all these pins over here. So the, the, S, the SOC in here 
has the CPU and the GPU. It has memory. These are two 16 gig. Well, th this is an 8 gig. So these are two 4 gig memory chips. And then there's a EMMC module on this one. I don't know if you can get them without EMMC. I think they all have 32 gigs built in. Uh, then there's a power controller, the Rock chip PMIC that controls power to everything. And then there's a little network chip. I think this is a 1 gigabit Realtek network chip. And uh, on the back side, there's, uh, there's, there's a couple little ICs. I don't know what they're for. Probably, uh, probably the firmware or something on it. Uh, but that's, this is a system on module, so you can't do anything with it unless you plug it into something else. So with a Compute Module 4, there's lots of different uh, boards. Like this is called the Flash Stick, which you plug it into USB, and you can flash the Compute Module directly on here, which is handy. Then there's things like this. This kind of turns the Compute Module 4 into a Raspberry Pi 4, same size and form factor. Uh, and then there's also boards that break out everything, like the Compute Module 4 I.O. board that has PCI Express, and it has GPIO, it has all the ports and things, it has four camera and display connectors. So it'll be really cool if, if they release a Raspberry Pi CM5. I want to see what kind of inputs and outputs they give us, because this gives us I think two lanes of PCI Express. I could be wrong. Uh, PCI Express Gen 3. Uh, so the specs on this rock chip, RK3588, are, are pretty cool. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a neat chip. It's expensive, though. Like I said earlier, this one, the 8 gig model, I think, is 129 or something. I'll look that up while it's running the, uh, the benchmark here. Green. Uh, TuringPi.com. I'm going to put away this 8 gig module. Uh, I'll go to here. Ha! Huh, you can't, there's no link here. You have to add to cart to see it. That's kind of funny. It's like forcing you to put one in your cart, but it, it should just say like buy now because you're not actually adding it to the cart yet. So that, oh, so I, I wonder if I got this on a deal on the Kickstarter. It was like 129 or something. So 149, it's not cheap. These things are not cheap. Uh, the 16 gig is 189, 32 gig is 300 bucks. So that is uh, that is it. Uh, it's it's there. There it is. And if you want to get more information about it, I think I have a link to it in the description. Uh, but still doing the single core, multi core will be a little bit faster. Um, I can't do any of the power benchmarks right now because I don't have a way to just isolate one board. Um, but I'll, I'll end up doing that soon. What I can do is do all the tests with one board and then do it with two, and then I can determine how much uh, power is used by one board uh, from that, because there is overhead with the BMC, probably a watt or two uh, on the Turing Pi 2. Uh, but I also wanted to test the built-in EMMC because uh, they had a bug in early firmware with this that is supposedly non-existent now. Uh, how long will the stream be? I have to finish by 3 for sure, central time. Right now it's 2 central time, so it'll have to be before then. But uh, I don't know how much longer I'll go. It'd be nice if I could get like all these flashed, but I don't think that's going to be possible. This is only at 27%. And someone mentioned it's faster over SSH. Um, let's see if, uh, if there's a guide for that. If there's not, I'm not going to try doing that on the live stream. Um, BMC. Getting started, that's turn by two. There's TP1. Turn by one. Getting started, here we go. Flashing. Uh... Wait, this is turn by one. We don't want that. We want flashing OS. Here we go. Okay. Flashing using the BMC. Yep, 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 you know all that. I don't see anything about doing it through SSH. I don't want to try experimenting with that just because I've never done it before and I don't know if that's supported or not and, and all that. But if I figure it out, I'll, I'll definitely document that process in this issue. So if you are watching the stream and you got to pop off or if you are watching the stream and want to find more, uh, I put everything I do in this GitHub issue. So I'll, I, I think I already linked to it in the description. Uh, but right now, uh, how am I flashing it? I'm using this BMC interface. It's a UI that's running over the web uh, to the BMC that's running on the node. So if I 
The BMC is running on this little chip. It is a all winner E113, so a little, a little SOC of its own uh, that runs the software that runs this board and lets you power up nodes remotely and interact with them. Uh, so that's going, it's up to 31%. It's gonna, it takes like 60 or 80 minutes or something like that. Uh, da -da -da. Uh, this is, oh, it's on multi-core. It's almost finished now. So when we get there, I'm going to log into Geek, Geekbench, Geekbench, and we'll, we'll add the result in here. So on my, on my result list, I do have one for the RK1. This was for the 16 gig RAM version. So if you look at the, the result from this one and compare it to something like the Raspberry Pi 5, uh, multi-core was twice as fast, which is kind of surprising because it's A70, A55 core. I don't remember what cores it has. The, the, the efficiency cores, uh, so basically uh, this chip uses the, um, the kind of big little architecture that, that ARM chips sometimes use, uh, where there's like efficiency cores and performance cores. It has four A76 cores, which are the same four A76 cores the Raspberry Pi 5 has probably some teeny tiny little differences in architecture and RAM speed and the, the connection to the memory module. Uh, but it also has four efficiency cores and those cores somehow add up to twice the multi-core score. I don't know how that's possible, um, but you know, more performance testing warranted for sure. Uh, but it's still a lot slower than a modern desktop. Like you, this is my M1 Max that I'm streaming this on is more than double the single core performance and like triple, quadruple the, the multi-core performance. But it's still cool. And if you have four of them, then that's what we're going to see. Uh, so let's see. This is the, the result with the 32 gig module. And we'll see how that compares. 795 and 3157. So almost identical. Uh, so I'm going to edit this uh, Turing Machines RK1. I'm going to edit this and call it RK1 32 gigabyte. RK1 running on Turing Pi 2.4 board, 32 gigabyte RAM module. So there's that one. And uh, here's the results. I'll just scroll through them really quick in case you want to compare that to something else. Uh, but it's, it's a good chip. So if I refresh this, it should be in the top of the list now. And I'm going to change this one and say it's the 16 gig version. Edit. Uh, 16, not 17, 16. Okay, so we got, oh, I should have, should have left this open and gone to my results. Hey, go away. Why is this menu stuck? There we go. Uh, I'm going to grab this result and put it into here. And I don't know any of these yet, uh, but I will check on the disk because I do want to see that. Clear. Okay. So, oh, so it is. It is seeing the uh, NVMe drive. I forgot to check for that, but there it is. And uh, apparently I had used this, oh, I, I did. I used it in the uh, Asus store, uh, my Flash Store 12 uh, for my, my NAS. I was using this in there, but now I'm going to uh, use it as a utility drive. That NAS is currently set up. I was using it for editing stuff, um, and it's down under my desk. Uh, but I'm switching to the HomeLab HL15 server, which I have a video on from a couple weeks ago. And I have another video coming out soon on that one, getting it more efficient, because 150 watts for a NAS is not that, that efficient. But I did get it down to 50. And uh, there's some opportunities to get even lower than that. But uh, anyway, so this is working. And I'm not using that Asus store for my editing NAS anymore. Right now, it's my general purpose in the office until I, I get uh, the HL15 set up. Uh, but this is, it, it doesn't have a brand on it, as far as I can tell. Uh, that's SEC, oh no, uh, SEC 240, so I don't know, I don't know who makes that, but, but, uh, it's a 32 gig EMMC, 
So I'm just going to put 2 gigabyte eMMC built in. And I don't know if this will actually work. I haven't actually tested this command. I usually download the script and, and mess with it. Let's see if it just works out of the box. Because the, uh, the initial firmware that they had for these boards had a bug with the eMMC that made it basically half the speed. So if I go to uh, RK1, is it closed? Here we go. If I go to this issue, uh, the speeds that I was getting were in the 150 megabyte per second range. Supposedly it should be much faster than that, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Um, I'm just going to download the script. I need to fix the script. Let me get uh, disk benchmark. And yeah, I need to I need to run this differently. Uh, this should be slash, and that should be mcblk zero. Okay, no, no. have to have permission to actually run it, and here it goes. So now it's doing the disk benchmarks. We're going to see how fast that is. Any chats over here? Yeah, down to a third of watches. So it's, uh, that's an interesting thing with the HL15. Um, I'll just I'll give a couple uh, hints. One is hard drives use a lot of power. Another is HBAs that uh, adapt hard drives into PCI Express use a lot of power. So that's a, a large portion of it. Um, also, I swapped out all the fans for Noxua's, which uses a lot less power with PWM control. So now it's, instead of being 60 decibels, it's 34 decibels. Huge difference. And uh, there's, so I'm, I'm not using uh, Raspberry Pis on the H HL50, and I'm using the Ampere Ultra chip. Uh, yeah, and, uh, Pog, uh, Pog Champion mode. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how that stuff works. I need somebody to like help me get live streaming working because I'm not a live streamer at all. Um, okay, so that finished. Let's check all these results. I'm still only getting 144 megabytes per second here. So I don't know. Is it something? Maybe I need to update more firmware somewhere. I don't know. Uh, 252. This is a little faster. Uh, random write is 105, 29, okay, is 22.1, so oh, 38.9, only 39.00. Uh, let's see, network results. Let's check this uh, sudo apt install dash y hyperf3. And I'll say iperf3-s. So I'm running an iperf server on my computer here, which is on 10 gig networking. And uh, that's where I normally, that's my target for these tests, because that way if it's 2.5 gigs, 1 gig, whatever, it'll hit that. And if I go iperf3-c 10.0.2.15, so it's getting 940 megabits per second, which is expected. And we'll wait for this to end. I'll grab that value. Yeah, if you gotta go, you gotta go. That's uh, what Malcolm said in Jurassic Park. 942. Okay, we'll do reverse. Geoff, Geoff, GIF. That's exactly how you pronounce those. But that's why I'm Jeff and not Geoff. Yeah, so clustering, I was hoping to get that set up, but then when I realized like an hour before this started that it would take more than an hour to flash one node, I realized we're not going to get the cluster set up. So either I'll do another live stream later or not later today, but later on, uh, or that'll be part of the video is getting this thing set up as a cluster. And doing that, I usually use my Pi cluster, my Pi cluster setup, which could be 
called like SBC cluster, but I've used it for many different Raspberry Pi clusters in the past. And it's uh, pretty generic. It uses Ansible to install Kubernetes on the cluster, and then you can do a bunch of different tests on it. So I'll be doing that uh, as soon as I get all these flashed, which will take hours. <laughs> I wish there was a way you could just give it, like, here's an, here's an ISO, uh, put it on all four nodes or something like that. But right now, that's not, that's not possible. So this is 927. And then I'm going to do a bi-directional test. Um, and the reason I do these is because a lot of times the... Uh, the chipsets for networking are good for up to a gigabit or 1.5 gigabits total bandwidth. You know, when, when you're doing networking, you want to have good upstream and downstream at the same time. Uh, thank you. I think I might have said who that was, but I heard a thing. Uh, Win, Wintao17. Oh, I did pronounce that, so thanks again. Uh, so, but sometimes, like, some chips are good at getting the full, like, one gigabit up and down at the same time. Other ones, like this one, it's still good. Um, but you're losing a little bit of bandwidth, but it's just to test the interfaces that, that uh, uh, with how fast they can be. 937 up and 230 down. Uh, but this information goes into my videos when I make them. Uh, tiny mem bench. Uh, let's see. Let me grab this. We'll do a memory benchmark. And whoops. Ah. And we'll let that run for a minute while we check on things. Uh, SPC bench. I'll probably do that later because that takes a little bit of time. And then I'll do my Pharonix test suite later as well. Uh, but generally, when I get one of these boards, I started explaining this a bit ago. Um, but I will, I will try to get a feel for how it runs, how fast it is, all that kind of stuff using this. And then, um, then I'll start doing some things with it. So set it up, set it up in a cluster. Um, see see how it works together, see if there's any rough spots, things like that. Then I'll try to do a real-world application for it, so whether that's running my Drupal website on it or something. And then I start working on a video. So a lot of people are like, oh, this is you know, a 15-minute video. It's like 15-minute video took me you know, four to eight weeks to make sometimes. So uh, it can probably not run Crisis, though, unfortunately. Um, the, the problem is, so another thing is a lot of times people think, that a cluster like this, you take these four computers and all of a sudden you have all that resource together. And that's not really the case. Um, each computer is still an individual computer and you have to write software or use software that coordinates itself between all the nodes. Uh, so Kubernetes does that, but Kubernetes breaks up containers across the nodes. And if your application isn't set up to scale that way horizontally, uh, this is horizontal scaling versus making one node really beefy, uh, then you're not going to get the performance benefit. So anyway, just something to think about with clustering. When you cluster, it doesn't make it automatically faster. It makes it so that your software can spread out to the nodes more easily. Uh, let's come back here. It's still doing the memory testing. So memory bandwidth is pretty good here. Uh, 12 gigabits, 30 gigabits. That's, uh, I think that's a little better than the Raspberry Pi. Uh, something that I was interested in seeing with these boards is, uh, if I go over here, and if I, I don't know what you're seeing. Uh, they, it has two memory modules, these two chips, um, and it splits it up. So eight gigs, this is four gig and four gig. These are 32 gigs, so those are 16 and 16. That could be faster for certain things, because it can split up the uh, the DRAM channels, but I don't know about the chip architecture on the RK3588 if it actually benefits from having multiple channels like that. Uh, for desktops, a lot of times that's the case, uh, but also it can slow things down sometimes too. So that's why you have to do a bunch of micro benchmarks like this uh, to see what happens in different scenarios and see how much cache there is. Uh, so you can see like here, there's no there's no latency when you're under this uh, 65 kilobytes. So the level one cache is probably here and you know different layers of cache. You'll see the latency increases by a, a lot when it hits a certain amount of cache. So you can see there's another like uh, up to a meg or so. There's uh, that might be level two or something. So anyway, these are ways to see your RAM performance in different scenarios with tiny mem bench. So I'm gonna grab that and uh, pop back over here paste in those results. 
not that. There we go. Any image. Update. Okay, this is still going. So we're at 68%. How long has it been? It's been like 40 minutes, 30 minutes since I started that. Yeah, Ceph cluster. So one big downside is um, for uh, if you want to run Ceph on a board like this, you have a one gigabit connection. It'd be so cool. I mean, it'd be really cool if they had a 10 gig connection to the cluster because then you could have each board could have a 2.5 gig interface and you could actually get some decent Ceph performance, like decent being, you wouldn't run a, want to run VMs off of it or something, but it would be good enough that you could use it in some production scenarios. Problem is this board has a one gig connection. It's like the big bottleneck in front of all the computers. So it's kind of annoying, you know, and, and you'd think, oh, you could just plug in two and use lag, L-A-G-G, -G, um, to get double the bandwidth. So you could get two gigabits, but that's these, these ports don't work like that, at least not with the firmware that's on here right now. So you can only use one port at a time, or you could have two different networks coming into here. So that's the big downside to this if you want to do storage on it or something like that. But thank you very much for the donation, Julian. And uh, yeah. Lag, link aggregate. But it's, it, it's usually L-A-G-G -G is how it's, it is. So in my brain, I think L-A-G-G -G, lag. But yes, uh, must go faster. Ah, more, more Jurassic Park references. Okay, so that's going, that's going. And uh, the sad thing is, well, you know, I, I have enough time. I'm going to wait for this to finish um, uploading that. And then what we can do is try to get the Pi cluster running on two nodes, uh, two nodes for the time being. And that way we can see if, if my Pi cluster code works on the Ubuntu setup uh, the same as it does on Raspberry Pi OS. It should. But I haven't tested that. So question for those in live chat. Let's see. Um, would you like to see some other parts of the office while it's doing this? Because it's 73%. Probably has like 10 or 15 minutes or something. And then I will definitely throw people off as they come into the watch the VOD afterwards. <laughs> like, what is this about? This is not a cluster of computers. Uh, diet Dr. Pepper. More specifically, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll try doing an office tour. So here's the problem. I have not tried this at all, and uh, I won't have the live chat. Actually, I could. You know what? Uh, I have an iPad. This is the old broken one from the family. I use this as my teleprompter. So this was the last thing. I don't even know what that script was. Uh, but I use this as my teleprompter because the screen is broken. There's tape holding it together. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll try to get YouTube up on here. So I can see live chat in case things mess up, because that'd be sad if things mess up. And I'm just like standing somewhere talking to you and don't know what's going on. Uh, YouTube. Whoops. Ah, no, no. This is also an old iPad. Apparently the last thing we watched on here was Bluey. Uh, Jeff. Thank you to Nevin. Oh, a new channel supporter. Thank you very much. Nice hair. Jeff Kierling. So I can pop open my live stream. And this will be trippy. You can see. At 1 800 contacts, we're here. Okay. Hopefully, there's not too many ads playing. I set it to like low frequency ads because you don't need, like, for people that watch the live stream, I don't want you to see many ads, but it's nice to see at least one or two so that I get a little bit of something. Uh, but let's see here. Oh, two ads. Come on now. Sometimes I forget uh, that uh, not everybody has YouTube premium. <laughs> For me, it's worth it because I watch a lot of YouTube. So it would just be so much time spent watching ads if I did not have it, so I can justify it. Okay, uh, so how do I get to live chat on here? I can't see live chat? What? Do you have to sign in to see live chat? That'd be insane. Uh, more? There's no live chat if you're not signed in. And I've never signed in on this iPad. I don't know if I want to, then Google can track me on everything. And I, I can't really, ugh. Well, you know what I'm not gonna do is that. I'm just gonna leave this over here. And we're just gonna wing it. So there are ads on YouTube. Well, 
if you use an ad blocker or something, there isn't. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the iPhone, and we'll, we'll take a short tour of the office. We probably have 10 or 15 minutes uh, because it's still doing, like over here, it's still doing this uh, just forever and ever flashing. So once it flashes that, we'll reboot it, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, but let me switch over to the iPhone, which hopefully has enough charge for this. We go here. There we go. Okay. So NDI is working. Ooh. Whee. It's always fun to do. Wait, what? Yeah, up here. There we go. Whoa. All right. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see what I'm going to do is switch audio. I'm going to turn off. Okay, I've turned off the uh, mic. Before I walk away, can you hear me? Oh, thank you very much, Mario. Uh, before I walk away, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, there's the little cluster. It's still, still flashing, still going. The audio, is the audio crackling right now? Okay, uh, I'm not going to do that audio then. What I can do is just yell. Okay, turned off that audio. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> I wonder if it's doing like Bluetooth. Okay, I'll just yell. So I'll, I'll start with my desk. Uh, this is the pile of projects that I'm working on, which is getting, it's kind of embarrassing. But uh, I mean, we all have piles like that, don't we? And that's only one of the piles. There's another pile too. Uh, but there's a lot of, uh, I hope there's nothing redacted in there that you can't see yet because it's not actually released. Uh, but there's a lot of things too where it's like, I did a lot of testing, so these are some smart plugs. They're very smart when they're plugged into each other. I just never did a video on them, so they're just sitting there. Um, I was talking about like reflashing with the SP Home, that kind of thing. That just never happened. Uh, the lint roller is not a project, that's just because sometimes you get lint. Um, but yeah, there's tons of things over here that I just not have not had time to work on yet. Uh, the open air stuff. Um, I actually have the air gradients set up. I haven't done a video on it yet, uh, but I have these set up with ESP Home, and they go into Home Assistant. So if I come over here and uh, open up Home Assistant, uh, that's coming into here, and you can see the CO2 as I talk. Whenever I close my uh, studio door, you can see it spike like that. So I'm, I'm going to have to figure out a ventilation solution if I want to close the office, the studio doors. Right now they're open, letting air come in the back and go out the front. Uh, but also it does temperature and it does uh, VOCs and things like that. Uh, and then, so here's the problem. I don't know, you, you probably won't be able to hear me. Uh, I, I, I used to have like a little megaphone. That would have been funny. Uh, but I'll just, I'll go back and I'll look at something and I'll tell you about it. How about that? We'll figure that out. Uh, so I'll close that. Okay, that's still flashing. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the, uh, the rack room area and I'll tell you about it once I come back. I do have AirPods. You know what? I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can get the AirPods into OBS. Yeah, well, I just, I hate bad audio, so I'm going to try this. Uh, if I go, this could just break everything, too. If I go to AirPods. Oh, sorry, you, you guys are just seeing, like, the table right now. Let me go back to here. Um, let's see, AirPods. Why are you not connecting? OBS. Test, test. This is not that. Properties. Let's try... No. It's not connecting to my AirPods. That's the problem here. Uh, properties. You know, I... Oh, you know what I can do? I have, uh, I can use my phone, or my, uh, my wireless mic. Uh, 
I have these uh, DJI guys. Let me take these back out. And I can just use my camera input. Maybe. I don't know if that'll work or not. I go to Alt Camera. No. Plus Audio Input Capture. Camera Input Device. device. Camlink 4K. Let's see if that works. Hello. Is that this one? Oh, sorry about that, but yeah, that's the one. Okay, so now you're through that one, and if I take one of these out... Learning on the go. Plug this in. Get you plugged in. Test. Uh, hold on a second. That's... Oh. I don't know why this never turns on. I got these new DJI mics, and uh, the receiver doesn't turn on unless you manually turn it on. Okay. Test, test. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. I think this is working. I'm seeing levels. Sorry about uh, making all that noise there. Okay, here we go. This, this is fun. This is, uh, sorry about geeking out on it, but I, I just love uh, doing little fun technical things with my stream that I've never done before. So let me... Hello? This is... <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I gotta add this uh, audio input capture. Camera input. Okay. Turn that off. Test, test. Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh gosh. Sorry about that. Um, yes. Okay. So now we can actually do it. And there, I'll do a trippy zoom there. And uh, by the time that we get this set up, you know, it'll probably actually be finished. Yeah, it's 98%. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. But, you know, it, it, since we got this all set up now, we're, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I won't be able to see chat until I'm back. Um, oh, it's low. We can turn this up. Uh, where's... Uh, shoot. Function. Uh, level. Test, test. Better? Better? Test? Hello? Yeah, hopefully that's better. Okay. All right. 33 minutes left. Huh. Okay, awesome. So let's come back here. So back here I have this, uh, for, for Home Assistant, I have a motion sensor, and it works great out all the way out into the office a little bit, so that's awesome. Uh, but I've been testing this human presence sensor, and for some reason I keep screwing up. Like, I don't know why. See, it's not turning on. This is the EP1 Lite, I think it is, the Everything Presence sensor. And it's just, now it's on. I didn't do that. So I don't know if it's a delay, if it's locking up, or w what happens. But sometimes it doesn't turn on until I, like, manually hit the on button. Uh, and then, I, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that, but... That's the Everything Presence light. I have a couple Pies running in this rack that are totally not racked up, but this is that WaveShare uh, Pi 5 PoE hat, and this is just a Pi 4. Uh, there's my Home Assistant yellow box, Simply Safe, that tries to catch my office on fire. I have a video on that. Uh, right now I'm running this router, but I'm thinking about upgrading to a 1U, uh, I think GoIn makes a 1U rack that serve the home cupboard uh, that is faster and it uses the N305, so maybe. This, this switch is now redundant. All it does is, I think it plugs into the, uh, this, this is a 2.5 gig uh, cable modem, but it only gives me 35 megabits up. Uh, but it plugs in there, and then it goes up to the switch up there. So I might take that switch out soon. It's a nice little QNAP 2.5 gig switch. It's good for utilitarian use. Uh, I have another air gradient back here. Uh, the reason I have one here is I want to see if there's any VOCs or anything from any server I install. Something you don't think about, like things off gas. Uh, so you get a new product and you turn it on and it heats up. So I want to see if any servers that I install end up giving uh, nitrous oxides or VOCs uh, or cause any other weird quirks. 
Also good for temperature monitoring. When I run the HL15, which it's not running right now, that's putting out 150 watts of heat into this room continuously. So if I leave the doors uh, closed, that can actually heat the room up. So something I'm working on testing over time and I'll have to figure out a better cooling solution than just a vent that sometimes comes on. Uh, and there's, there's still just a cable up here. I'll need to fix that at some point. I do have some cable channel that I'm gonna run around uh, so that I can easily put cables between the two racks and have them hidden and tucked away. Kind of like that one. But this was, this is by far my favorite thing I've done in the whole studio so far. Anytime I need a cable, I just grab, use. It's, it's so nice to have a patch cable holder. Never have had one of those before, but I got my DAC cables. These are direct attach. Um, I don't have any fiber stuff in here yet, but then I have longer and shorter uh, patch cables some cage nuts and things, the tools that I use back here. It's funny, like every piece of equipment, there's a screwdriver that's best for it, whether it's a stubby or a big, thick, bulky one, or you know, the cage nut, the finger saver, I call it. Um, and you need a scissors everywhere all the time. And then you have your Velcro because you always need to tidy things up. Anyway, so that's, that's the rack. There's, uh, there's the low power uh, UPS in the bottom. Stornator XL60 and HL15. I was starting to install that uh, Mars 400 server, a little Ceph server in this rack, but I could not get the rails to go in correctly. Uh, so I'm gonna need to find the, the manual for that. They're like King, King rails or something. I don't remember what these are, uh, but I'm gonna work on that soon. That is a big long server though. Uh, what else? And I, I got things cleaned up back there. Hopefully you can hear me still. Let's see if you can, is there anything? Where did you get the cable? Yeah, Amazon. So I think the last moving vlog or two, two vlogs ago, uh, it was uh, in there. I have another one here at the desk. This is, I mean, it, it's messy, but this is a working desk. It is not a show desk. I'm not, I mean, you could call me an influencer, I guess, but I, I don't like influence. Look at this. This is, this is about as clean as it gets right now. That's because I did the live stream today. Uh, but this is highly functional. Need Ethernet, Ethernet, boom, Ethernet. You need a, a micro USB charger, got it there. Need USB-C, here's a, a, a plug to my computer so I can plug in USB devices up here. Uh, I don't know what this, oh, <laughs> it's not plugged into the computer, that's the, that's the whole cord right now. Oops, HDMI to the second monitor in case I need it. Uh, micro SD and SD card reader into the computer, uh, lightning charging. All that stuff's here, and then these are all my chargers, so I needed to charge something. I just set it on the desk and, and charge. Uh, and there's that iPad that is broken and is not signed into YouTube. Uh, this is not recorded, no. The voice is great, that's good. Uh, that is awesome. So that's it's something I need to remember. I can just use my camera input. I also just bought these light stands, which are so, when you have space, it's so much easier to do recording stuff. I can just roll these anywhere in here and I have lighting. So uh, just for fun, I was like, I'm gonna put a light on the eclipse picture. E eclipse, sorry, it's eclipse. I say eclipse, but it's just eclipse. Anyway, I put a light back there because now it looks nicer. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If I switch to my main camera, see here, it's like lit there. If I turn off this light, this is not gonna be permanent, but it's, it's just a fun way to play with different lighting scenarios. If I turn that light off, then it's just kind of pitch black back there. So it's, it's so nice to have like lights you can move around on wheels. Uh, let me go back to the iPhone. And uh, late, you're never late. You, you arrive precisely when you mean to. Uh, so anyway, uh, then camera setup like I have, this is the camera I take most pictures with. Uh, it's the A6600. And I have Sony's E16 to 55. It's a nice general purpose zoom lens that is very flexible. And then this camera is what I do most of my video recording on. It's an A7C2 with Sony's F4 20 to 70. It's a great lens too, very general purpose. And then I have some other lenses too. And then up here at my desk, I have uh, another A6600 and you'll notice I have the screen off so that the, it can get better cooling to the back. These are not made for video, but they, they work. And it's using, I think, a 20 millimeter? 24. 24 1.8 uh, Sony lens. 
And that is in the Elgato prompter, which lets me see live chat and see people in Zoom calls and stuff. It's a nice purchase. And then uh, for, for audio at my desk, I have this Asden, I don't remember, it's the SGM250CX. And that comes into the computer through a Behringer interface. And yeah, this is very messy. That's how it is. Like I said, working desk, not a, uh, uh, it's functional, it works. And then this is, oh shoot, I, I left these lights on. This burning up wattage that I don't need to, but this is through Home Assistant. A little button, studio lights, press it, and they all go off, including this, oh, that was weird. I've never had that happen before, but it just like turned back on for a second. Uh, so anyway, there's a P60X flat panel light up there for a rim light, and then there's, uh, I think, a P200 or two, whatever the 200 model series is, Amaran 200X and 100X with a couple soft boxes. Again, things that I could not put into my home because the, uh, the setup there was, was too small. I was in a space, literally, like, if you cut the floor here, well, if you cut the floor here, that was my whole office, recording area, testing, just boxes were everywhere, so it's nice to have the space. Uh, there's storage for Raspberry Pi stuff, storage for PC building stuff, storage for camera and photography stuff. There's all the, the boxes for the lights. I should probably just throw those away, but it's fun to have the boxes up there. Um, and then this is the retro corner. This is what I've been working on for the past couple weeks, mostly. There's a mirrored drive door G4, and it is truly like a mirror now. It was not like that before. And uh, I'll do this for you because it's just ridiculous. If I plug this in. Uh, it has the world's loudest startup chime. Listen to this. And you, there's no way to get it quieter. I'd, I've tried firmware hacks and all kinds of stuff. It's like, and even if you cover this up, then your hand vibrates and turns into a speaker. So anyway, th this, is, there's, this is a whole project. It's been a lot of fun setting that up. There's a PowerBook 3400. There's a Canon GL1. This is one of the cameras, was the first few videos I made on YouTube were with this camera or an XL1 that I did not own because they were way too expensive back then. Uh, but that was a cool find because for a hundred bucks I got that. It complete, everything works on it. It's a little, needs a little cleaning up, but it works. This one needed a lot of work, but it, it booted, but not very well. And it's still kind of loud and it uses 250 watts. Uh, the PowerBook G, the PowerBook 3400 uh, needs a little more work, but I'm trying to max it out too. Um, and I, I even found this old book that I had in my basement. How Max work? So fun. So, and then this is this is like my utility rack in the front. Just has networking from the back, and uh, a little QNAP switch that I I talked about in one of my moving vlogs. That server right now is is my backup NAS here. So I have my main NAS is under my desk, and that's my backup NAS. I figured that this wall will block fire, you know, for at least like three seconds. So it's nice to have that separation. And then eventually my main NAS will be back in the rack room, but I've been working on it. So anyway, that's that. And uh, I finally hung up a couple things. So I have the uh, X-ray of the Raspberry Pi 5 here, metallic print. You can get that at redshirtjeff.com. This is the, the dial-up tone on a modem. That is a Sega Game Gear. I did a, a, a retrofit of a Raspberry Pi inside the Game Gear using Name Gear. So anyway, I need some water, and we'll get back to the desk and keep working on things. Hopefully it finished that uh, other Pi, and we still, got, we still got 20 minutes. That's enough time to do some fun stuff. Let's see. 250 watts, yeah. That's, it's a lot of power. Hello, can you hear me? Test, test. Test, can you hear me here? Ah, oh, shoot, hold on. Gotta mute that. Turn on this. Mic, aux. Test, test. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Test, test. Okay, good. I'm gonna turn off this. Well, you know what, I'll, I'll just leave this in case I need, need it again. I don't think I will, because Gotta be wrapping up soon. Close this up. Okay. You can hear. 
Noise gate is fierce. Yeah, there is a noise gate on the uh, overhead mic. Yes, yeah, I I love that uh, dial-up tone. It's it's fun to look at that and also listen at the same time, and you're just like, oh, there's an analog picture representing the sounds that I'm hearing. Okay, so this one finished, and it, here's another funny thing. I'm you're not seeing my screen, uh, but this one finished, and uh, when it finishes, it goes to 100, percent and then it says upgrade failed. It, it worked, but it failed. You know, it's it's kind of funny. Um, so that is not the desk banging that I. I think, so next door is actually a place where they sometimes drop heavy things, and that just happened, so that's probably what you're hearing, unfortunately. But yeah, task failed successfully. <laughs> yeah, that's JavaScript. So I'm guessing there's like an object that has some reference in it that was not accounted for, and then it says failed. Uh, but anyway, uh, we got that. The second node might be up. Let me check. I'm going to switch off of here really quick. Uh, I'm not seeing... Oh, yeah. So uh, let me make sure that I'm on here. So if you look... Yeah, it's focusing on my hands again. The Sony engineers, they love hands. If you look there, you can see an orange light on node number two. That's this one. Uh, the orange light means it's connected to the network. So that's a good thing. Funny thing is, I don't know why... There was a bug on here that would like act like it wasn't a gigabit or it would only get 100 megabits, but I think that was with the Jetson. So these are good. I don't feel any heat coming off of them, so I mean, it's not doing much anyway. Uh, but let's get back over to screen. Uh, in just a second, open this up. Object, 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 yes. I'm going to scan my network really quick and see if I can find this, and uh, then I'll switch back my screen. Got to get this Pi 5 out of here. Hold on just a moment. Okay, 240. Oh, there's a bunch of new devices on my network. I wonder if the other ones somehow booted up into something. I'm going to try 238. Go back to screen. Exit. Oh, I can quit out of this. Uh, 10.0.2.238. Uh, that's interesting. Maybe it's not 238. I'll try 240. 241. Yes. Nope. 242. Maybe one of my viewers is uh, is hacked into my network or something, but I, I'm, I'm guessing these come pre-flashed with something on them that, uh, that's doing that. So I need to change my password, and yes, I will be changing these passwords again, don't worry. Uh, whoops, that's not the password. Shoot. Ah, let's try that again. So it's making me change the password. Current password is Ubuntu. Ubuntu. And new password is this weird thing here that I'll change later. And now I'm going to SSH copy ID. And now I should be able to SSH without using the key. Okay, so I'm in. Uh, let's see if we see. Yeah, so there's that NVMe drive. So all the NVMe slots seem to be working. I'm going to assume that the rest will work too. Um, that's BLK. There's the NVMe and the built-in EMMC, so that's good that those work. Yep, yep. Uh, now... Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to... Make this bigger so you can see, at least a little bit. Uh, what is it? Pi cluster... Make sure I'm on the latest code. I wasn't. Ha. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to turn off screen sharing for a second and check and make sure I have no secrets in here. Uh, 10.0.2. Um, do to do file system. We're not going to use ZFS right now. I'm 
Okay. I'll just use that hash salt. Save. Okay. And then hosts. All right, I'm going to close that and come back to screen sharing. I just wanted to make sure, because I've done in the past some silly things before. Uh, this is all going to get nuked, so don't worry about that. Hosts, uh, we have... I'll just use the IP addresses right now. Uh, that's node 1. And that's node 2. So we'll go... Control plane will be on node 1. And... Uh, you know what? This is going to change my networking too, so this might not work out of the box. I might need to do some more setup work for this that I'll have to do in the main video. I'm going to delete those nodes. Uh, storage, we'll do it on that guy. So the cluster is going to have the control plane, which is the, f the I'll, I'll have it on the first server, that's going to run Kubernetes's control plane. And then nodes, right now there's only one that I know is running Ubuntu. Uh, so what is happening right now is I'm setting up the cluster so that all the nodes can work with each other. Right now, these are all individual computers, and you can address one or the other or the other, but I can't do anything to coordinate between the four of them. Uh, you could do it with custom software. You could use something like Kubernetes or other clustered software. Uh, I'm going to install Kubernetes on it. I'm just going to see what happens here. It's probably not going to work, uh, but we'll see if it works. Uh, but this is my this is my Pi cluster. Well, yeah, it's easier if I just show it to you over in Safari. Uh, Pi cluster. Do I have it up somewhere? No. Pi cluster. If you want to do this on your own cluster, it doesn't need Raspberry Pis, it's just anything running Debian, basically. Uh, but this is the software that I use to uh, test clusters of, of these single board computers. So I have that set up, and uh, some things might be Pi specific. I don't think they are, but... Oh yeah, I do have some Pi specific stuff. So this isn't going to work. Uh, because I don't think if I cd into boot, yeah. Oh well, huh? Is there a command line in here? I don't know if this uh, distro used the same kind of setup. There's no command line in here, so some things will fail on here. So this won't work, and uh, we'll probably end up wrapping up the stream around here. Um, but what I what I will do is make this playbook work with the Turing Pi as well. Um, and yeah, in terms of, yeah, Shep is talking about load balancers and things. There's, there's a lot of different ways to lay out a cluster of computers. And, uh, for this one, you, like I said earlier, you're bottlenecked by a single one gigabit connection. So you can't do a lot of things that you would want to do with clustered computing when you have higher power individual nodes, but you can do a lot. Um, am I from Great Britain or the USA? I'm definitely from the USA. With how, uh, and I'm from the Midwest, so if I, if I pronounce things funny sometimes, that's that's probably why. I'm from Missouri, which is actually Missouri, but some of us say Missouri and Wash, Warsher and Warsh and Farty and things like that. Uh, but but yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this in today's stream because we got you know I got to be done in ten minutes anyway. I think we can wrap it up there, and then uh, like I said, I will be putting timestamps. So if you came in late, I will have timestamps up later either today or tomorrow, that you'll be able to go in and find the spots that you want to see, whether you want to see the tour of the office or whether you want to see um, the hardware setup or um, information about the Turing Pi RK1 or whatever. Car wash. Yeah, misery. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up there and I'll, I'll flash the rest of the nodes. What I'll probably end up doing is another video on the board uh, where I put it into... This guy, I don't even know if I'm on the right camera. I'm not. I'm not on the right camera. Like I said, not a live streamer. I'm going to put the Turing Pi 2 with the RK1s in one of these two, and then a Desk Pi Super 6C cluster with six Raspberry Pis in another, then I'm going to do like a cluster off or something like that. Uh, the cool thing is you can uh, pop these out, and this could be its own little mini ITX case, two mini ITX cases, or altogether it's a one like a 2U rack mount server with two ITX boards. There's some little tricky things about this, and uh, 
I think, oh, this is cool. I didn't even know that. You can, you can turn this into two 10 inch rack mount uh, devices. So if you have a 10 inch rack, which in America, they're very hard to find. They're easier to find in Europe. Uh, but if you have a 10 inch rack, you can have two of these two two you things in 10 inch racks. Of course, that it's pretty big for a 10 inch rack. Anyway, very cool little unit. And this is from My Electronics. They sent this to me like a year or two ago. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I don't know if they're selling it or not, but if they are, I'll try to link to it. Uh, but I'm going to put those two in there, and I'll do a video on that at some point. I don't know exactly when that'll be. Hopefully it'll be soon, but uh, thank you everybody for watching, and uh, do something about my sound. What's, what's wrong with the sound right now? It seems like it should be okay. I mean, I, I have a noise gate and stuff. This is, the problem is that there's fans running right here that are pretty loud. Um, this is not my normal studio setup. Uh, 10, 10 inch whatever that is in your non-freedom units uh, but yes yeah no the buzzing in the background is the fans if I, if I shut this down let's see if this fixes it for you uh, shut those two down and go to node power and turn those two off let's see how that sounds Okay, those are all off. Is that better? Does it sound better for you now? 25.4 centimeter rack, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yep, yep. Okay, so that should be better. Yeah, it's, it's sorry about that. I mean, these are, they, they, the funny thing is the PWM worked last time I set up the cluster with the 16 gig modules. So I don't know if there's something in the software that's wrong or what. I'm sure that somebody in the live chat probably said like, oh, said fix something, but, but whatever. The, the problem with not noise gating is that there's usually a couple sounds in here that I don't realize are there that, uh, that cause issues. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, the rack is definitely very bare right now. I'll, I'll, I'll be putting more stuff in there. Don't worry. There's also, I didn't show you the project rack here because a couple of these things I don't know if I can show you yet, but uh, one of them is a Frigate NVR running on a Compute Module 4 in Access's Interceptor case which is a, a one U rack mount server for uh, running your own DVR or NVR. So that'll be in the rack too. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, yes, this is in the new studio. And yes, it's, it's cleaner. I could close the doors. It would go from, let's see what we're at. Uh, um, let me see if you can even see this. Okay. So, oh, wow, that's been on for like three hours now. Anyway. If I am quiet, which I'm not. So we, you know, down to like 30, 34 decibels or so is the typical noise floor in this area. Yeah. Um, but if, if I am quiet and I close the doors, it goes down to 32 decibels. So we could get down that quiet. It, it starts getting a little uncomfortable once you get past like 33, 32 decibels. Your head feels weird. Uh, so yeah, the Pi NVR video. <laughs> I've had that on my list for like six months now. I have everything working. I even have three setups with it that I was using for different testing. We're going to get there. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you everybody for watching. And uh, as, as I always say, until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.